Everyone see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, Possum Pals. Uh, it's great to see everyone here. My name is Mike Aparicio. Uh, I am the senior design systems engineer at a company here in Chicago called Provi. I apologize in advance if none of the other slides in this deck are as good as this one. Um, I probably spent more time on this slide than any of the other ones. So uh, when Steph asked me to, uh, if I'd be interested in doing a talk on templating languages at the first 11D meetup with the possum father himself, Zach Leatherman, I was like, yes, absolutely. Uh, and then I, uh, oops, then I immediately went to Google. And uh, after a little bit of research, uh, I'm fairly confident that I'm now an expert on the topic. Um, but before I get into it, let's take a little trip through time. Uh, so back in the day, if you had a website with multiple pages, it was this huge undertaking to keep things consistent between all those different pages. If I wanted to add a new page, I'd have to go into each existing page and update the navigation. There's a lot of cutting and pasting going on. Eventually, I figured out how to make this easier with PHP by including the header and footer from separate files. That way, any changes could be made in a single place. The only problem with this is that you need your web server to be able to run PHP. And besides that, the pages were compiled this way every time someone visited the page, which wasn't super performant. And over the years, various flavors of templating languages came along in an effort to solve this shortcoming by pre-compiling templates into static pages. Think of these like SAS for markup. They made it a lot easier to write and maintain vast amounts of code while keeping things dry. While the features and syntax of these templating languages can be wildly different, most of them offer these three features. Objects or variables, which let you store and display data tags, which let you iterate over or conditionally display data, and filters, which allow you to apply functions to data or otherwise manipulate it in some way. The cool thing about 11D is that it supports all of these template languages. So if you're already familiar with one or have a bunch of content that already uses one of these, moving to 11D is pretty easy. 11D also allows you to use JavaScript as a template language or pre-compile HTML as any of these template languages. If you're new to 11D or template languages in general, I'm gonna use Nunjux today to demonstrate some of the cool stuff you can do with 11D. So let's go back to our first example, which I've spruced up with some more modern markup and learn how we can use templating in 11D to make our static content more dynamic. On the left here, you'll see a pretty typical directory structure for 11D. This is from a little starter project that I made, uh, which I'll link to at the end. The first thing we can do is save our whole HTML page in a folder called underscore includes inside of our source directory. We'll call it base.njk. NJK is the file extension for Nunjux. The source directory is where 11D will look for files to compile into static pages in the site folder, which we can then upload to our web server. Here, we're replacing our actual content with a template object called content, which we indicate by surrounding it with two curly braces. You'll notice there's a pipe. Uh, with the word safe. This is an example of a filter. The safe filter is essentially telling Nunjux, hey, you, you don't need to ex uh, escape any HTML in this object. I trust that it's not some malicious user submitted content. To create our home page, we create a file called home.html in our pages directory and copy the content of the page into that file. Although the extension is HTML, 11D is treating this like a Nunjux file. This lets us add front matter, which are these key value pairs added in between triple hyphens uh, that we can refer to elsewhere using variables. Here, we're setting this page's layout to base, which we just made. 11D will look for these layouts by default in the includes directory and cycle through all the different template engine extensions. So you can actually omit the full path and file extension here. 11D will now compile our homepage into the site folder under pages slash home slash index.html. You can see our content inserted inside of the main element. The default path though is not super ideal. You can use the permalink key in your front matter to override the default path where 11D compiles your pages. Here, we're just using it. Uh, we're just using a single forward slash, which means 11D will compile this page as index.html in the root of our site folder like so. The real power of templating comes when we start adding more pages. 
let's add our about page. We can create a new file in our pages directory and add our front matter and content. Here we'll also add a title, which we can reference later. It's really going to get annoying, though, having to specify the layout and permalink on all of our pages. We can add a JSON file to our pages directory that has the same name as our directory, pages.json, and specify any front matter that all the pages in this directory should have. Here we're saying that all the files in the pages directory should use the base layout, and we're using another filter, slug, to generate a permalink based on the title. Slug will convert the title to lowercase and make uh, uh, and things like convert things like spaces to dashes to make the title more URL friendly. We can override anything in uh, this file in the front matter of individual pages, like our homepage, whose permalink forward slash compiles to the root of our site. Eleven D refers to this as the data cascade. Generally, the closer to your content, the higher priority a data source will get. Now in our about page and any subsequent pages, we can just specify the title and our directory data file will apply the layout and permalink. 11D compiles this page to about slash index.html. As you can see, because it's using the same layout as our homepage, the title and nav don't reflect the fact that it's the about page. So similar to how we have our directory data file, we can add data to our underscore data directory that can be accessed as variables in our templates. This is called global data. Here we'll create a file called site.json and add some metadata about our website. In our base layout, we can add some conditional tags to our head to pull in our site data if none is declared in a page's front matter. Nunjux tags open with a keyword enclosed in curly braces and percent signs and end with the same keyword prefixed with the word end with no space. So here in the title, we'll show the site name from our site.json. And if the page has a title key, we'll append that to the end of the title element. For the description, if the page has a description key in its front matter, we'll show that. Otherwise, we'll show the site description from site.json. We can then add a description to the front matter on our about page. And now our compiled about page has the correct title and description. Now let's apply some templating to our header and nav. We'll create another file in our data directory called nav.json. And there we'll create an items object that contains the URL and name of each of our nav items. We'll be able to access this object as nav.items. There's other ways to handle more complex navigation, including an 11D plugin, but this will do for this example. So back in our base layout, First, we'll go ahead and replace the site name in our H1 with the variable from our site data. Next, we can make a for loop that iterates over all the items in our nav data file. Here, we're saying for each item in our nav data, show a list item that links to the items URL. And if that URL matches the current pages URL, we'll add some attributes that'll allow us to style this item appropriately. Finally, the link will display the item name from our nav data. Our compiled about page will now show itself as current in the nav. The last thing in this layout you're probably eyeballing is uh, the date in the footer. And if you're anything like me, you're still reeling from 2020. And here comes 2022, five months away, ready to get all stabby. Well, thankfully, you can create your own shortcuts in 11D uh, in the 11D JS file. This is basically a, a config file for 11D that allows you to modify its defaults or extend its functionality. And this is a little trick I learned from Stephanie, who's uh, one of our co-organizers on her amazing site, 11 Rocks. We can add this function here that creates a new short code that displays the current year. <laughs> Somebody's at the door right now, of course. Uh, we can add the, sorry. Give me one second, I'm so sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wants to sing hold music. Do, 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 do. While you're waiting, you can check out dogsof.dev, which is an 11D site built, I believe, by Mike. I think mine is on page four. And I assume that she will bark during my talk as well. 
What was the URL for that? That was, that was embarrassing. Nah. Dogs of dot dev. All right. So, uh, so we made this shortcut, uh, the short code. Now we can add this to our base layout uh, and rest easy knowing that the current year will always show in the footer, or at least the latest uh, year since the site was built. Okay, so we have our layout looking good. We've got a few content pages. What about a blog? Let's see some of the stuff we've learned so far to add blog entries, and we'll learn a few more things along the way. So we'll make a new folder called blog and create a file for our first entry. And this time we'll use Markdown instead of HTML. Markdown is the oldest of the template languages that Eleven supports and probably the most widely used. Unlike Nunjux, which we've been using, Markdown's more about making it easier to write HTML. So in this example, the two pound signs will enclose this title in an H2, and the text below will be enclosed in paragraph tags. We can use double asterisks to make text bold. We can create links with text in square brackets followed by the URL in parentheses. We can make a bullet list with hyphens or asterisks. Uh, again, though, we've got some redundant front matter that'll be shared between blog entries. So we can make uh, blog.json, which will be like our pages.json with a couple of differences. So we might want to display our blog entries a bit differently than our other pages. So let's make a new layout called blog. We'll also move the permalink here and add a new key called tags. So 11 e has a feature called collections that allows us to display data about all pages that share the same tag. We'll give all the pages in our blog folder the post tag. So here's our new blog layout. We'll add blog.njk to our includes directory. Layouts can have their own front matter, and we can actually nest this layout inside of our base layout. Our base layout already adds the title before the content, so we don't have to include it in the post itself or in the blog layout. We could also display things here like uh, the author, the publish date, uh, article tags. Um, this will do for now. So we can add new blog entries now with uh, just a title and a description since our JSON file includes the rest and we can omit the title from the content since our base layout handles that. So one last thing, let's make our blog page that lists all the blog entries. For our blog page, we'll make an unordered list and inside that we'll make a loop that says for each post in collections.posts, that is all pages with the posts tag, add a list item with a link to the post's URL and show the post's title. Here, data in post.data.title refers to the data in the page's front matter, which is where our title lives. And here's what our compiled blog page looks like. So in about 10 minutes, we've built a solid foundation for a website using the power of templating in Eleventy. So there's a lot of other cool stuff that you can do with Eleventy that I don't have time to go deep on, but Today, we looked at different ways we can bring data in from local files, but you can also create pages from external data with APIs. So updating pages in a code editor and committing changes to GitHub isn't always practical, particularly when non-technical folks are responsible for editing content. You can use a headless CMS, which basically serves as a UI for entering data, and then have 11D fetch that data at build time to generate the site. Basically, you're handling the head part, or the display of content coming from the CMS, unlike something like WordPress, which does both. There's a ton of companies providing this service now. This, uh, this list is from an article written in March, so there's probably at least 50 more of these by now. So that's about as much as I could cram in here. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about Eleventy, I've added some resources here. Uh, the Eleventy website, of course, is great. I have a site called Eleventy Recipes, which has step-by-step -step instructions to add individual features to Eleventy sites. Uh, again, Steph's uh, Eleventy Rocks is an amazing resource. Andy Bell has a great course on Eleventy, which he recently made available for free. Uh, you'll learn a lot of uh, stuff about Eleventy there, as well as some great CSS tips. Uh, you can find the Eleventy starter that I use for this uh, on my GitHub. And there's also links here to these slides, as well as uh, all the code from the talk. Thanks so much, everybody.